Welcome to A Rare Reality, a podcast powered by Jordan's Guardian Angels. I'm Christina Janes, Director of Outreach and Content Development, and I am joined today by Lexi Levine, our sibling extraordinaire. <laughs> Everybody knows her, loves her. Lexi, thanks for being here today. And we're also joined by Hannah Evanson, who's here today to talk to us all about, gosh, keeping a, a lighthearted approach to life, right? Um, Hannah, you do stand-up comedy. You're hysterical. Um, but you also have, have ties to, to special needs and, and, um, uh, living with, with difficult diagnoses and things like that. So, um, we're going to talk through it all today. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. It's great. We're excited. Um, start us, like walk us through how, how did you get started in stand up? How, how, <laughs> cause it's, it's so unique. Yes. Yes. I, um, I guess I, I always love storytelling, which is mm -hmm. a classic uh, stand-up background. <laughs> yeah. um, and I loved watching stand-up and I was working in New York for a few months, ran out of college and uh, worked really close to uh, the street where all the stand-up clubs are. And they had a bunch of open mics and um, I just one day decided to go down and try my hand and uh, it went horribly, but I loved it. <laughs> but you did it, and that's all that matters, right? Is yes. that you, you got you you did it the first time. Um, how yeah. do you do that? How does that work? You just say, um, <laughs> "I'm going to go do that." How did what? <laughs> well, you have to love attention, be a little bit of a narcissist, and <laughs> that's me. <laughs> no, but I think. Um, yeah, you just obviously it's really scary the first time. A I, like most people, I had a lot of stage fright. I was super, super nervous. And there were five people in the crowd and still I was shaking in my boots. Um, mm -hmm. And then you just keep doing it and it gets less and less scary. And soon you don't even feel nervous at all. It's really like just practice like anything else. Yeah. So you come up with your own content. You know what kind of like yes. where you're going with all of this, right? Does that, is that how this works? Because I really have no point of reference. We watch it, but I don't, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so I'll write, um, I'll write my material yeah. um, before I go on stage. And then typically what happens is you're kind of like workshopping jokes. So mm -hmm. if I, I write something that I think is a good premise and then I go on stage and I'm like, this didn't really work, but this part worked. And then I tweak with the words and tweak with how I'm telling the story um like time after time so I'm really doing a lot of stand-up comedians are they're doing the same joke over and over and over but they're changing things about it every time based on the reception that they get or if they think of a new tag for example um so yeah that's so it's kind of process. always a work in progress yeah yeah for sure which is cool I mean if you think about it it's actually you know you're always evolving yeah yeah exactly Lexi I know you're having a fangirl moment too um <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> yes. oh my gosh I know like growing up with my brother like my sisters and I would always kind of try to make a light of things because honestly sometimes that felt like it was the only way to survive so I know like when I first like learned about your videos and stuff and like when you would talk about your brother um who may you might want to introduce us to yeah. um I definitely mm -hmm. really related to those because honestly a lot of the stories you mentioned about like other people's reaction to him and everything a hundred percent I've had those exact same situations like you told the story from Boston I'm from Boston I'm like oh I've had that situation happen <laughs> 50 times yeah. <laughs> um okay so let's talk about Lucas like tell us all about your yeah. brother yeah so Lucas is my older brother, uh, one and a half years older, and he has a chromosomal disorder, uh, which is a developmental disability. Um, it's a lot like Down syndrome, but um, not. So he he's nonverbal, but still very social. He uses his own kind of made up sign language to communicate um, and has, you know, a little bit of like walking motor control mm -hmm. uh, issues. Um so yeah, but super, super social. He yeah. like picks up on everything that's going on, always wants to be part of the combo, always Aww. has a lot to express. So yeah, very, very social guy. <laughs> I love it. It's special. So sweet. Um, yeah. And I think Lexi makes a good point. You know, when you're dealing with something that's difficult, 
you're doing something with that's that's hard out in public or at home, like being able to apply humor to it in some way makes a huge difference. I mean, being able to kind of lighten the mood a little bit, I guess. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. I feel like you can put others at ease too, who aren't mm-hmm. always sure how to navigate uh, if they meet someone's special needs and, you know, they're trying to be very careful and polite. And if you're kind of, you know, making light of the situation or laughing, they kind of feel invited to uh, relax a little bit and realize, you know, they're, you can't really mess up that badly. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, well, and I think that, the yeah, yes, it's nice to be able to be, um, be yourself and, and to be honest about whatever it is that you're, that you're feeling too. Now I have to tell you, when I first heard about this, um, we were having our weekly meeting and, and, um, our executive director, Carol Backos had said, I really, I like you, have you, have you heard of Hannah? And I was like, no, what do you, what? and she explained kind of what you do and, and bringing humor to this, this difficult diagnosis. And I was like, Carol, what? <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to say that again? Um, and how does this work? Yeah. And how will we not offend people? And how does that, how does that fly? So, I mean, I feel like you kind of walk a fine line there, but mm-hmm. you also know what you're doing. Does that make sense? Like, you know, you know where, where your boundaries are and you, you also know how to push those boundaries. I hope so. I mean, it comes from a very personal place. So yeah. I'm always talking about very, personal experiences, but it's taken me years to find that line. Um, It is really, really hard to write jokes about this. I think as soon as people hear special needs, I start out and say, I have a brother with special needs. People really tighten up because, you know, your first reaction is, oh, I don't, I can't laugh at this. This is, I think people are worried, you know, for good reason that are we going to be laughing at him? Like what's, where is she going to go with this? And it's taken me a really, really long time to write the stories in a way where I really have people on board where they realize that like, this is us laughing about the situation. Um, and a lot of times I could get so frustrated because people, I get like, you know, questions or critique that people talk about their, their spouses or their kids on stage all the time and sometimes people will tell me like oh if you're going to talk about him in this way you have to start out by being like I love my brother I love him so much and then like people who talk about their spouse or kids they don't get those same comments like how do we know you really love them if you're using them for material (laughs) you You don't have to hedge your bets in that way yeah 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 um and there have been times when I've thought like I just don't want to tell these stories anymore because it's hard. Like I'm very vulnerable too when I'm telling them and people always, you know, I, it, it is, it is hard when you feel that people like not so much now, but definitely in the beginning when I started telling these stories that people feel uncomfortable about it or have these like questions like, huh? is the community okay with this? Right. <laughs> the community. <laughs> I'm talking uh, about my lived and shared experiences, yeah. you know, and, and what happens within like your own family. Right. I mean, that's right. really where the material comes from. You're not talking in generalities about a community. You're talking no. about things that you've been through. Yeah. I'm not talking about anybody else's brother yeah. or, or child. Um, right. And what's made it really rewarding is, when you, people like you or other people who have a family member or have a sibling or whatever with special needs who really relate, which happens more than the critique. And that's what's made it yeah. really rewarding. Yeah, definitely. Um, and Alexi, you'd mentioned the ice cream incident and maybe Hannah, you can <laughs> bring us up to speed on that for, for those who haven't heard this joke yet, but um, what happened there? So that's, that was one of the first stories I ever told on stage. And it's still my favorite joke to tell. I (laughs) still tell it to this day. I just, I love this story. And I think it like really kind of is symbolic of what I'm trying to do with um, storytelling about Lucas on stage. Um, And this was a long time ago. I took him to get ice cream at a store and he started licking the display 
And the employee was just doing his best. You know, he was like, how do I handle this? And he kept calling him sir. And I thought this is so hilarious that, you know, someone is licking your display and you're still being so professional. Like it's very impressive, but yeah. also just so funny. Yeah. Um, and I thought if I can make people see how funny this situation is, then that's kind of, that's kind of, that's a very powerful thing to sure. be able to do with storytelling. And with a situation like that, where you're like, okay, now how, how do we, what are we going to do? Like, so you're laughing, you <laughs> yeah. know, it's like yeah. been there, Definitely. done that. Right. Yeah. I feel like anytime you like handed my brother something, he would like immediately put it in his mouth. So I can think of like so many situations. <laughs> yeah. Where, like, someone would be like, oh, can, like, he hold this, like, to demonstrate something or do a test? Like, he's going to put it in his mouth. And then they hand it to him and they're like, don't, don't put it in your mouth. Take it out of your mouth. I'm like, no, he's going to put it in his mouth. Like, there's just, yeah. you know, you just start laughing about it. And I totally agree. Yeah. Like, sometimes it's, it helps to, like, lighten the mood if you show, like, people who aren't familiar with the situation that yeah. it, it's okay to laugh. Like, it is funny. Like, I know one of the situations, like, I used to laugh about a lot would be, like, my brother he he was pretty smart he knew how to like work his way through things and like yeah. when he was in physical therapy he did not want to participate so he would just figure out how to like take the easy way out like he, when he was in the gate trainer he'd put his feet up on the bar because he didn't want to actually practice walking and so I would always <laughs> be like, so lazy and the gasps and shock faces I would get were so <laughs> I'm like no like this is like the definition of lazy you guys like it, he's he can do it <laughs> doesn't want to <laughs> right what it is. yeah exactly. yeah I mean that's the thing I think that's one of the things that you have to work through is like you have you you are calling it what it is you're saying you're like here is the obvious right like yeah. mm -hmm. and it's okay I mean because you would do it with others who are you know neurotypical or living in a in a in a particularly quote-unquote normal way right so um why not like what just say it say it say where we are here, you know? Um, is it hard for you to Hannah, when you, when you have people say like, Oh, that shouldn't be said, or we, you know, Oh my gosh, we're not comfortable with that. Or is that hard for you? Because I feel like you mentioned being vulnerable in this and mm -hmm. th that's living your truth. And you're talking about your truth and, and your personal experiences. So is it hard to receive that? Because I mean, in mm -hmm. the end that you're telling your stories. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, it's heartbreaking um, to hear because I like in a lot of ways, sometimes what I'm hearing is, you know, I'm talking about him on stage and talking about very light, real moments. Yeah. And I, what I'm hearing is like, people would rather you not talk about people with special needs at all. They want because it makes them uncomfortable. So they want it out of sight, out of mind. They don't want to come at a comedy show and to hear stories that involve someone with special needs because people's kind of initial reaction to that is that discomfort or like pity. Um, and that's so sad to me too, because then it's, it's like, they can't even think about um, people with special needs without just thinking this is only sad. There can't be any right. happy or light moments. There can't be, I, you know, there can't be anything that we can find laughter in um and I just think that that's you know that's not really fair right <laughs> either it's and it's not true it's not you know obviously everybody knows that there are hard rough sure. times sure everybody knows that I mean that they almost know that too much frankly people who don't live it what what they don't often see or aren't that as open to are you know, that the majority of the time we're, we're laughing and having fun and just going about our lives. Yeah. And there's so much joy. I mean, that's the thing is that yeah. there's so much joy. And I think that yeah. comedy and laughter brings joy to people. And, um, I mean, you're bringing joy to, to so many in, in all that you do and, um, your career is really on the rise. And, um, <laughs> do you, do you think you're going to, are you going to try to make this your career or do you have other plans? Like what's, what's the, what's the plan? I would love to have a career in stand-up. Uh, yeah. Often that's <laughs> a lot more luck than, um, you know, all I can do is just keep working at it, keep 
Chip Nalanthi's jokes. Um, but yeah, that would be great. It's working. You're doing awesome things. And, and I think that you're, you know, shining a light on, on, on reality and, and, um, in addition, just, you're just darn funny. I mean, um, tell everybody where you're, where you are on Instagram, because, um, we scrolled through those, those videos and I was, I was like, thank you. I needed that. <laughs> um, I'm Hannah E comedy on Instagram. So that's Hannah, no H E and comedy. And Perfect. I'm going to find me in it. I'm going to put it in the notes for this podcast too, so everybody can see. Awesome. Um, and hopefully we have families all across the country and the world. Um, so having uh, the opportunity to to kind of showcase what you're doing and um, if they're in your area and can catch a show, it'd be super fun for them to see you too. Um, for our families that are out there listening today, like, do you have a message for them? Um, yeah, I, I guess just, I mean, I'll, I'll be preaching to the choir here, obviously, but <laughs> Um, if you can, the more you can, I think there are many situations where you can kind of choose, um, joy and laughter. Um, not always, but there are situations where you can think I can kind of let this go now. And, um, what's, what's happening is happening and I can either get on board the train and like laugh about it or, get really stressed (laughs) and anxious about it right um and everything becomes like easier and more fun if you are able to laugh more and and let other people laugh with you um and yeah yeah I love that I think that's I think that's the best part right there is that like you can laugh more and let other people laugh with you um especially these days like please bring bring more laughter to the world (laughs) Yes. Yes. Lexi, anything else you want to add? No, just, I think keep doing what you're doing. I I think like, like we said, it helps to normalize it. And yeah, like just helps people realize that there is so much like joy in people who live differently than the norm. Um, And also just to to show that it's okay to like laugh when funny things happen, even if you might be like uncomfortable with it. Like (laughs) the story you told about the ice creaming, like that's hilarious. Like when my brother would like all of a sudden, like let out the loudest burp in a very serious conversation or something like that. Oh, yeah, like that's hilarious. Like laugh at it and he will too, you know? So right. yeah, definitely keep on doing what you're doing and I'm excited to follow you. Too. Yeah. It's <laughs> wonderful. Hannah, thank you. Thank you so much for spending some time with thank us. You. We appreciate it so much. And uh, we hope our community does too. I know that um, you'll be gaining some followers from this too. Cause I know that bringing joy is, is so special. So thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for everything that you do as well. Thank you. And for everybody out there listening to this right now, you can catch more of our podcasts on Apple, Spotify, Google, you name it. It'll it's, it's on there. Um, also on our website, jordansguardianangels.org and uh, gosh, YouTube for translation services for our families around the world. So everywhere, everything, follow us, take a listen. Thank you all. Hannah, Lexi, thank you so much. We'll see everybody soon.